Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just talked about some of the different things happening around that Michigan case. Definitely some real news that came out yesterday and some more news that could hurt Michigan in the long run. But as of right now, it feels like it's a lot of the uh, NCAA just not being too happy about them not complying with this case the way that they like. So it'll definitely be an interesting thing to kind of unpack over the next little bit. And there are going to be some allegate or some punishments coming for Michigan maybe in a little bit in a couple of months here, but definitely something that will be at least substantial enough to talk about. No two ways about that. Um, but let's get into one of the big time factors that might be uh, a little bit under talked about. There have been some people that have talked about it in passing, but travel is kind of a new thing in this sport. Obviously, you have people traveling every single week for games. That's not a new, the new part of this by any means, but you have a lot of teams traveling across time zones. You have a lot of teams traveling from the Pacific to the Eastern time zone to play a game, and they're going to be traveling on a Thursday, and they got to lace them up at noon on, uh, on a Saturday. So, there's a lot of factors that go into that and so many different things that can kind of get in your way when you get into this. And the teams that I really want to break down here are the teams out in the West that are joining the Big Ten this year, and then one team in the ACC, well, both teams in the ACC, really, that are really going to face this most aggressively, Cal and Stanford, and we'll break down how just insane their travel is for this upcoming year. But let's start with a team that everyone's watching very, very closely in the Big Ten in the Oregon Ducks. They are the team that everyone's pointing to as the big-time players this upcoming year, the team that is fully ready to contend, and there's no two ways about that. When you look at the roster, the coaching staff, the players, everything is in place for this team to win a national title. They do have to play games that they didn't have to play in the past by any means. They have to travel to Michigan. They have to travel to Purdue. They have to travel to Wisconsin. And that, while it's not nearly as bad as some, what if some of the other uh, new Big Ten teams have to face, it is going to be a factor. It is going to be something that they're going to have to deal with. And to give you an idea, the gap between UCLA and Oregon, which is the furthest team from Oregon uh, among the teams that were in the Pac-12 before and are now in the Big Ten, that's only 729 miles. And some of these other trips are closer to double that. Um, when you go to Michigan, when you go to Wisconsin and Purdue, those are definitely going to be double that distance, and you're going to be cro crossing time zone, which is kind of the bigger thing here. I think everyone can handle a long plane flight, especially you know compared to one hour down to UCLA or a couple hours down to UCLA, four hours over to Michigan. Not necessarily the craziest thing in the world by any means, but when you talk about the time zone change, that is going to factor in. And when you talk about Big Ten football, margins are everything so there's no two ways that this could absolutely cause a problem for uh, for Oregon and I think that Wisconsin game is really interesting it's a very interesting part of the schedule but also making that travel is not going to be easy into an environment that is not going to be easy so there is a reality where Michigan drops one of those games that you're not expecting and you might just have to point to travel as one of those big time reasons. USC is moving into the Big Ten as well, and they have a little bit further of a trip than some of these guys for some of the other teams because some of those teams are just a little bit more north. When you have to go to Michigan, Maryland, and especially Minnesota, you got to go really north to get up there. So not necessarily uh, the best thing for them. Obviously, going to Michigan is the toughest test because of the team on the other side, but when you got to go all the way over to Maryland, all the way over to College Park and play a really, really explosive offense against a rather suspect defense, I'll put it that way nicely, but at the end of the day, this thing could get really sketchy really quickly for the Trojans if they're not careful. You know, you're totally changing your sleep schedule. It's a lot of different things that go into this and a lot of things that a USC player has really not had to deal with. Obviously, traveling to South Bend is a definitely a big time flight and one they have to deal with every now and then, but overall, it's going to be an entirely different ball game and absolutely will play a factor into that game. And especially a team that's going to get up and down, that's going to make you run. It'll be interesting. That's for sure. Um, Washington travels to Penn State, Iowa, and Rutgers. Rutgers is the one. Uh, that is a very, very long way away, but they make two trips over 2,000 miles this year. That's quite the trip. There's no two ways about that. And they uh, go from the Pacific to the Eastern time zone twice when they go to Penn State and Rutgers not going to be easy. And Rutgers is a very good team. They are a team that is not going to give you an inch. They are going to play the game the exact right way. They're not going to get a ton of penalties. They're not going to make some of the mistakes that they did a year ago. And a lot of the things are going to come into place that it might not be the most clean game in the world from Rutgers. It might not be the prettiest thing in the world, but 
it's going to cause issues for teams. And I think Washington's a team that you could go out there and think, you know, we have the better quarterback, we have the better wide receivers, we have a lot of the better players overall, but Rutgers has the home field. They have they didn't have to travel to get there. They didn't have to take the five-hour plane ride. Maybe they got better sleep than Washington did. A lot of these little things that, frankly, didn't play nearly as big of an impact uh prior to this are absolutely going to be huge this upcoming year so Washington could lose that game going all the way to Rutgers and you could again point to that travel as a big time reason for that and then finally UCLA has a very interesting schedule because last year it was a lot easier they traveled to Hawaii USC Penn or excuse me LSU Penn State Rutgers Nebraska and Washington this year that is quite the trip. There's no two ways about that. They're going to be flying all over the place, especially that trip to Hawaii is going to be quite the trip. But you compare it to last year when they had to go to San Diego State, Utah, Oregon State, Stanford, Arizona, and USC, a lot of those are right around them. There's no two ways about that. They only had to leave uh, their time zone once when they had to go to Arizona. So it's a very, very, or I guess Utah would be one as well. But it definitely will be a really, really interesting thing. Uh, they, they're leaving the t their time zone five times in 2024. Will absolutely play a part in this team. And frankly, this is going to be a tough team in general. I think they're not necessarily going to have the ba best year in the Big Ten. And it'll go beyond the travel. But UCLA is not necessarily getting the best uh, cut of the the best cut of the new teams going into the Big Ten as you talk about travel because they face a lot of games that are just going to be nightmares in terms of travel. But one of the best examples happens in the ACC though because what Cal is up against this year is just unfair. I, I think is the best way to put it. There are so many things that there's so many different stats that have come out about the travel that they're going to have to face this year, and I think the biggest one is. They travel 83.2% around the circumference of the earth in their road games this year. They have five road games. It's not like they have seven road games compared to five at home, and that helps that out a little bit. They're traveling 4,180 miles every week. That's their average of every single week throughout the year. That is absolutely ridiculous, especially when you look at some of the other teams in the conference where Florida State is just above that, about 4,400 miles. Uh, when you look at uh, Pittsburgh, 4,500. Uh, Wake Forest, 4,600. Uh, SMU, only 2,900. And that's not the average. That's the entirety of the year for these teams is almost the same as the average every week for uh, Cal for out-of-conference games. So Cal's up against it. There's no two ways about that. They are. I think they travel more in their five road games than 26 of the of the 32 NFL teams do in their, I believe, eight road games or nine road games, depending on how you cut it. So it's ridiculous. There's really no other way to put it. It's absolutely insane that they're going to have to face this. And this is a really fun team. This is a team that absolutely could have a lot to say in this conference because of that guy right there, Jay Knott, being one of the best players in that conference. But overall... It's insane to have these kids expected to, you know, rise to that occasion. I, I think it's going to be a team that plays a lot of close games, plays it really tough, but at the end of the day, loses more games than they probably should because traveling all the way over there every single week is going to be an absolute nightmare. So whether it's, you know, traveling out to Syracuse or traveling out to Virginia or Virginia Tech, there's not an easy travel for any of the games that Cal plays. I think they do play SMU, if I'm not mistaken, in Dallas, so that one's not quite as bad, but if that's your easiest one, then that's a nightmare. They do play Stanford, so that's a layup, but other than that, Cal's up against it, and it's an absolute nightmare. And then you go into the other team that we talk about in the ACC, Stanford, and they're expected to travel about 14,000 miles, and the second most in the ACC, of course, because there are two teams out in the ACC that are getting a very raw deal when it comes to uh, geographic um, proximity to the teams in that conference. But they do have road dates against Syracuse and Clemson in consecutive weeks, which is a absolute nightmare. Traveling up to New York, then back to uh, Palo Alto, then back out to Clemson is not going to be an easy thing in the world. And frankly, I would not be surprised if they lost both of those games. But then they have a trip to Notre Dame, and then they have NC State two weeks after that. It's just a, it's a nightmare for uh the Cardinal, I think. You look at Cal's schedule, there's a little bit more spread out when it comes to the travel that they're going to have to make. 
Stanford gets a lot of it in a very short amount of time, so that could be a really, really tough stretch for them. There's no two ways about that. So they they are spared a little bit. They do play Cal. They do play uh, San Houston State. So not necessarily too, too bad at the back end of that schedule, but overall, it's a, it's a nightmare. There's no two ways about that. And I think when you look at a lot of these teams, you know, not necessarily all of them or most of them really are not necessarily looking at this year as a national title year. I think when you talk about these teams, Oregon is the team that you circle and say, that is a national title level team. They absolutely can make noise there, but there's a wrinkle here. There's no two ways about that. There is something that could absolutely cause a problem for Oregon this year, and you're going to play Michigan. You're going to play Wisconsin. You're not going to play, you know, well, you are going to play Purdue, but uh, you're not going to play Northwestern. You're not going to play some of the teams that you should just be able to show up, be physically more powerful, and beat. That's just the reality of some of these games. That likely will be the reality in the Purdue game. That's not going to be the reality in the Michigan game. I can promise you that. And the Wisconsin game, maybe a little bit, but much less so than they're expecting. And I think it's one of those games where if you're not careful, and Wisconsin especially is on their game that up- that day, and they know that you're coming in a little bit sh- uh, sluggish with a little bit of jet lag, that's all you need. Um, when you talk about this upcoming college football season, I think the biggest thing here is These are going to be margin games pretty much all throughout the year. I haven't seen a conference, at least from my point of view. When you look at the SEC, it is Oregon and Ohio State. When you look at the uh, or the SEC, when you look at the SEC, it's Texas and Georgia. When you look at the Big Ten, it's Ohio State and Oregon. When you look everywhere else, you know you can pick out Utah in the Big Twelve. You can pick out Florida State and Clemson in the ACC. I wouldn't necessarily say there is a big drop-off anywhere in really any of these conferences. I think when you look at the SEC, there's about seven teams that can make some noise. So maybe Texas having to make some of the travel that they haven't made in the past, or Oklahoma especially having to make the travel over to Auburn and that type of thing, much less aggressive than what Cal has to deal with. But it absolutely is something that could play into the mix. So I think overall, when you look at this season, there's so many different variables that go into this season, and winning a lot of those variables is going to be the one that, you know, finds a way to win that national title at the end of the year, but travel is one that some just can't control, Um, and especially the ones out on the West Coast that join some of these big-time conferences, you're going to be up against it. There's no two ways about that, and you're going to have to deal with some stuff that Georgia, that Texas, that some of these big-time teams just don't have to deal with quite as aggressively, especially that Ohio State against Oregon battle. Ohio State doesn't have to travel nearly as much as Oregon does, and that could be the difference between who wins that conference and who comes out uh, up uh, just a little bit short. So we'll break that down, obviously, throughout the season and see how much that really plays a part. I tend to believe it's going to be a huge factor, but maybe these teams don't care at all, and they just uh, get off the plane totally refreshed and dominate a team. But we'll break that down throughout the season. But let's uh, take our second break here, and when we come back, we're going to break down some of the big-time players in fall camp. When you look across all of the contenders this year, there are a couple of players that need to make the most out of fall camp, and if they don't, you got some real problems going into the year. So we'll break that down for the major four teams, Texas, Georgia, Oregon, and Ohio State, right after this. So stick with us. 